you know, Shadi and Ramius running deep, getting booty. Uh, well, welcome back to another episode of Running Deep with Shadi and Ramius. Yes, we're glad to have you back with us for another episode. So, uh, this is your favorite pain in the ass, nice guy, sweet guy, whatever you want to call me. You know who I am, rolling out from our indie studios. And I am Ramius, coming to you from Austin, Texas, sometimes called the Admiral. Uh, we're home based on server 22 with the Challenger Alliance, part of the shuttle family with Columbian Enterprise. And, and a lot of a lot of you folks know, you know if you've been listening to any past episodes, you know who we are by now. You can tell our voices, but we're just kind of giving out a little bit of love for our new uh, new folks that may be coming to the show, listening to us. Um, and that way, if you guys haven't had a chance to go back, and you're like, "Hey, I want to listen to what they got going on," and then you want to go back and listen, so you know what's going on. But anywho, um, carrying on here. Uh, excuse the pit bull in the background. She's mouthy. I don't know why she's being mouthy. <laughs> I'm assuming one of my one of my older ones are home right now, but uh, yeah, dogs like Probably I don't. So. Dogs like what's going on outside? Something's moving. Oh my god, it's a leaf, Dad! Watch out! <laughs> kill it! Kill it! Get kill it. it! Die! 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 Actually, believe it or not, she's a big old baby. I mean, I don't I don't recommend kicking my door in at two thirty in the morning, but if you fancy you know, getting your butt chewed on by a chainsaw, knock yourself out. Um, so today's episode, uh, we're going to play with Wishlist 2.0. We came, we came at you guys last week with some information as far as what we thought would be cool add-ons to bring to the show. Um, not necessarily to the show, but to the game itself. Yeah, we're bringing it to the show. Sure. Um, you guys bring it to us. We bring it to you. Um, <laughs> we had terrible. some uh, interesting feedback in the comments, so we're bringing those to you along with a couple others that have come up over the past uh, week, right? Both uh, in the comments and in the Discord channel, right? Also, by the way, I am not under the influence of any sort of uh, chemical that may or may not have been in my truck that I had no idea of last so week. No mind-altering <laughs> substances. This is a benefit, right? Yeah. Last time you were a little sassy. Um, a little? <laughs> when I have to cut out half the show in the editing <laughs> process. Yeah. Uh, 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 what, what, what. So uh, what you guys got to hear was half. Was half. It, what, was, uh, was, was it half? Half. Oh, are you Maybe. sure? <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I, I vaguely remember a rant. That's about it. Uh, no, I, honestly, folks, I, I I don't know if I explained it to you in the last show or not, but I work for a medical supply company, and I had a product that had come to find out the uh, glass vials that the Gas. product was in. Gas. What? Sorry. What I you? said gas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gas, you know, not, not you know, break wind gas. It's a knockout gas. Of course, then again, depending on who you are and what you eat, you could knock somebody out with, with that. But, well, well, that's a whole other story for a different show. Actually, for a whole different uh, different show. Um, but now, uh, I was driving along, and apparently a couple of the vials of the stuff had cracked, either in transit to my, my sorting location or... On the truck that that was that was on our way to it, so there's a process involved. I'm not going to go through it all, but uh, these vials were broken, and apparently some had spilled out and had completely flooded the cabin of my van that I was driving. Uh, so yeah, nonetheless, I am uh, not ine inebriated um, outside of what I know that I'm inebriated with, which is nothing at the moment. Um, so. We're gonna have some fun today. Hopefully, we can get through without ranting and trying to uh, provoke a conversation with somebody. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, like I said, this week's uh, this week's title uh, episode that we're gonna do today is Wishlist 2.0. Uh, 
We're going to bring you some ideas to everybody that was brought to us. Hopefully the uh, powers that be are listening. Um, but again, we're not jumping on anybody. Uh, we're just saying, hey, these are great ideas. Now, there is going to be a little bit of commentary about the ideas. Um, we're, and we've also kind of got some questions about some of the events that have happened in the past 24 to 48 hours. Um, sometimes they don't make sense, but we're going we're gonna to get into to why it doesn't make sense to us and then uh, kind of kick everybody's feedback to us. And then we'll put it on the next show. So part of part of our sensor sleep segment, uh, we're going to ask you guys what you think. So um, with that further ado, we're going to go ahead and carry on and uh, head over to the um, to the uh, wish list. First, we have to do scope lease us because we need uh, to talk about the events first. Yes. Well, hey, well, well, I mean, we're already at it. OK, so scope lease us um, this week. We have a. Uh, well, we, we have threat. yeah we have a triple threat. Well, actually today is a triple threat, um, but we've had a swarm event. Now, typically, a lot of folks, a lot of us like to call it Swarm Sunday. So we always look forward to Swarm Sundays. Go out there, kill swarms, uh, get some get some some resources, get a little bit of materials, and it's Swarm Sunday. Life's good. Um, but they've tried. They've decided to do Swarm Week this week. Um, okay, cool. I know swarms are important, and me and Ramy has talked off the air about this. Um, we get how important swarms are. We enjoy it. Love going to hit them. But where it's it a little mindless. Yeah, it gets mindless. Yeah. So, so the question that I have, and and I think me and Ramy as well agree, is where is this going? Where Scopely, Where are you going with a whole week worth of swarms? Now, an idea that I have. So that was the question. So we've kind of pondered on that question and tried to come up with a couple different answers of what possibly could be. I'm, I'm hoping this is this is the this is the answer. I, I'm I'm afraid I'm wrong. Um, I've been wrong once. Got an ex-wife. So again, I've been wrong yeah, once. <laughs> so the, the the that was the question. Why are you doing a full week of swarms? The only time that they, the scope has ever done a full week of swarm was when new content was coming out for Swarms. Well, with that being said, where's the new content? We'll do, are we have missions coming up? Is there going to be uh, another Franklin type event coming out where you get parts of the Franklin? Is there gonna be some potential for maybe a Jayla to pop up if some folks haven't already have her? So that that's my hope is that they've got a week full of this coming up. But you would think had actually some new content come out, they would have announced on the front side of Swarm Sunday, where it's turned into Swarm Week, what's going on? Well, I wonder if reaching back a couple weeks to the Scopely surprise, we had some new officers kind of working up into the officer queue. Right. And I'm wondering if any of those that were officer named short <clears throat> are not related to the swarm. And you know, that that's another, that's actually another good idea because um, when, obviously in the movie, when the swarms are introduced, it's just Jayla. Obviously the crew that was on the Franklin to begin with um, had mutated into what they are, you know, what, right. what they are and what they were, because obviously they're now been eradicated. Um, so, could some of those crew members that were a part of that captain that went down with the Franklin and 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 if you guys are curious of who we're talking about, we're, we're talking about uh, Edris Alba's character in Beyond. Uh, that that whole that whole storyline was awesome. Yeah, for for most purists, yes, I'm very much a purist, so I'm going to say that front and foremost. Um, I'm a purist when it comes to Star Trek. You don't mess with it. You, it's been successful. I understand you have to reboot things, and I understand that you want to introduce. Obviously, there are different visions, and J.J. Abrams, I think, has done a fine job. Most people are like, oh, my God, it's not the way that it should have been. Nah, nah, nah. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I've had my moments where I, I bitched and complained because Khan wasn't Khan. And me and, me and you, we talked about that. 
So, right. with, so with that being said, so for everybody that has that opinion, we get it. We're, we're totally on board. So now we're going to talk about what's going on with it. So Edris Alba's character in Beyond. Um, Crawl. What was it? Crawl Carl? is his name. Okay, Crawl. Crawl. Yep. So his character, Crawl, we're not seeing his name pop up as far as what's going to happen in the timeline. Um so maybe that's going to be something coming to the future. Now, Scope is surprised. We didn't see his his name or likeness anywhere whatsoever in the new officers coming. It's not saying that it's not a potential. Um, right. But th- that could be something that's coming because there were a few officers that were not named. And that were epics. He would be an epic. <laughs> so... Yeah. That, that could be very, very interesting in how he's put together in there. Now, I just had a complete um, entertainment moment because I didn't know this. So okay. IMDb is my favorite friend. Love <laughs> looking up stuff on IMDb. <clears throat> and I'm scrolling down here as to who is whom, and I see on here Keenzer. The, the actor that plays Keenzer, his name is Deep Roy. <laughs> and... If you know anything about Deep Roy, he is also known for doing all of the Oompa Loompas in the last version of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Oh. Um. <laughs> no wonder Keezer, his movements was Oompa Loompa-like. <laughs> so uh, there you go. That's a little little info there for you. What, what, what makes the Admiral chuckle? That. <laughs> mm-hmm. There you go. Uh, also this week in Scopely says we have the uh, domination event, so that seems to be going on daily. Daily Alliance, Daily Alliance solo, um, standard stuff. Yeah, that, that's that was the that was kind of the uh, not necessarily rant, complaint, grievance, question moment that I had earlier was why are you doing a domination event on top of swarms, on top of a mining event for Latinum Latinum, Rush. Really? Latinum Rush? I'm sorry. It's sensory overload. I'm not saying that we're not smart enough to figure it out, but unless you wake up and you're consistently on the game, you're like, I'm going to dedicate X amount of hours to this, X amount of hours to this, and X amount of hours to this every single day, it's damn near impossible to complete all that to get all the rewards it's there's just to me i see it difficult here's the other side of that coin when you're talking about domination events unless you literally have been stacking officer xp and ship xp and speed ups and 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 everything that goes with it there is there's hardly any way for you to win that event unless you have a American Express a American Express black card. Easy for you to say. Uh, well, apparently it wasn't. <laughs> so unless you or, or you're just you know crazy wealthy, which there's nothing wrong with that. Continue to spend the money, do your thing. It's your life. So we're not digging at that. It's like you know for for those of us that are grinding it. How in the hell are we supposed to compete with that? Now, I know that a lot of events are tiered. There's like, okay, so there's X amount of people in this group, X amount of people in this group, X amount of people in this group. Well, the prime example was the last um, Armada event. I won that Armada event for damage, and I came in second place in in the second uh, second round of it. Um, That was a really, really damn good time. I enjoyed it. You know, hitting everything, and again, thanks to um, Alpha and Spike and Acold and Oric, I believe, got in on the play, and yeah. Bougie got in, and Uramius. You guys were like, "Hey, listen, let's roll." And I, I mean, it helped that that I had a little bit more, a little more crap in my britches than than most of our players did to hit some of them higher ones. But we were hitting epics and rares left and right. So, again, thank you guys so much for helping me out. And I can't tell you how many freaking speed ups that I ran through to, to just dillo away. And, yes, uh, in, in, in our family, uh, on the shuttle family, we call the Alliance, the, the, the Alliance Armadas dillos. 
because it kind of sounds like armadillo. It was fun. At least that's that's my understanding of it. Yes. So, so try to smack. Have you ever have you ever tried kicking an armadillo? They roll up in a I ball and they're they're damn near indestructible. That's true. However, and I'm sure you've probably hit. I live in Texas. You've um, hit one. I've, no, I actually haven't hit one. Really? But, uh, yeah. You will find them periodically along the side of the road um, with a Lone Star beer can tucked into their dead paws. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't seen this, it is truly entertaining. Yes, it is not the smartest thing in the world to do because they do carry some nasty leases, but there are folks in Texas that are more about the entertainment value than the safety sanitation element. And so, uh, I'll, <laughs> pictures in the video, I'll just leave it. <laughs> oh, God. So Upside it, down armadillo, <laughs> star beer can in hand. That is freaking hilarious. So any, anyways, back, back to so we call them dillos because they're damn near indestructible unless you had the right crew to knock them out. So, um, so whenever you know we we went on we went dillo hunting for two days straight, um, and just everybody was was trying to to chime in and get get their get their stuff in. Uh, but again, like I said, it was tiered. So in my tier of of peers, um, I topped out. Um, which that's great because that makes it a little bit more competitive for me or for everybody for that matter to be able to compete win prizes and put a little bit more effort into it than you normally would by like well here comes another event ding 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 all right well i'm out and then right. you know once you hit your 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 solo um they usually folks stop after that well a lot a lot of folks like well what more is there for me to do? I've already done done my dailies or what have you. Well, that's fine. Do your dailies, but your alliance also needs those extra hits. So, you know, instead of going out and just doing your dailies and calling it done, go out there and slap some more reds around. Go out there and do another 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 armada or two. Um, you know, try to try to help Every boost. Every little you. bit helps. Yeah, yeah. Try to help boost everything else. So again, that's something that is kind of that's kind of had me with that one so the events like the way that they are it makes it difficult to win any of these events because some of them are tiered some of them are not and honestly the uh the the domination events that's a you you definitely gotta drop some loot down just to make to make those happen i'm just being real i don't have that kind of deep of a pocket to throw any money at the game to to do to do some craziness like that to me that's just crazy because i i can tell you how <laughs> i've got better things to spend 100 bucks on <laughs> 100 bucks 200 bucks so trust me i, I uh, there's things out there now don't get me wrong i have spent money on the game in the past but not not nearly as much as i've seen good lord yeah <laughs> so Let's uh, close this out. We'll yep. move on to our uh, deep dive topic, which is our uh, wish list. One ping only. Okay. So the first couple of these come directly from you guys. Almost a sensor suite. Uh, all right. So first up comes from you guys. Um, and it is crew change. And the comment says, how about being able to switch your crew around outside the station? How hard is it for someone to switch chairs? And I thought this from the beginning, how hard is it for me to go from mining gas to mining crystal aside from relocating the ship? How about being able to switch around the first officer and the captain and get those benefits? I mean, <clears> think <throat> about it. They got it. They got a turbo lift inside of most of these ships where they go from deck to deck. How freaking hard is it? <laughs> right? There's probably some mathematical thing where going to the station uh, changes the math on the ship itself. But uh, we're, we're going to screw with all of that as we uh, go through the rest of this list. Right. So. And, and, and here's the other thing, kind of kind of a segue in. There's also transporters, for God's sakes. Why, how hard is it to beam somebody from one spot to another? They do well, that. And, and that's number two transporters there's transporters that are able to transport crew or cargo from ship to ship at the in the movies why can't we eliminate the 
going back and forth to the station and being able to beam cargo from ship A to ship B and have that relay it back to the station. We won't even get to the transwarp beaming and all that kind of stuff that came yeah. out of the movie, but let's be a little realistic here. Well, here, here's you know, I as far as my two cents again, it's whatever it's worth. Um, it could be worth a million dollars, it could be just two cents, but. I think the reason why they don't do the the cargo beaming back and forth is because you pull your ship in, you beam it off, and you take off with it, and your miner's still there. Now, granted, it's really no different. Again, let's let's look at both sides of the coin. It's really no different than sending your miner. It gets full. You send another miner to sit on its on the on the node. It continues to mine. You send your other one back. You enter the other one, it comes back, and then and then you know you you ship you, you just kind of switch miners. Now, obviously, what's the difference of sending a miner, beaming it, and sending it back? The only thing is, oh, you actually have to come up off the mine, put another miner on, take it back. So that there's time that's involved. So that would give somebody maybe that split second opportunity to sneak on the mine, on on the mine right. and do it itself. So. I, I, I'm with you. We do it with miners. We do miner swaps all the time. I mean, I'm doing it right now, actually, as we speak. I've got a miner that's mining. So, um, you know, I, I I'm, I'm like you. Yeah, I don't, I don't really see an issue with hit, hitting a, hitting a um, transport cargo button to another ship. But the 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 key with that one is it, it has to be the full load. It can't just be partial load. Um, so if right. you if you have a minor, say say you're running around with a with a horizon with four hundred and some odd, uh, you know, cargo space. Well, if you're if you filled that monster, and you pull in with a non void that's got like two hundred and fifty k, you're gonna yeah. lose some nope. of that. Yeah, it's going to disappear. Right. So there's always that that possibility that you can do that. Uh, Alex, I'm with you. I don't. I mean, we already deal with minor swaps. How hard is it to pull a minor and hit it? Hit the uh, hit the transporter button and kick your cargo over. Agreed. So number three, change war, and this one's a little bit more interesting, a little involved, but I like where the person's going with this. Yep. It says make wars viable, uh, make a war declaration, and do like a five versus five, ten versus ten, fifteen versus fifteen, kind of like an armada. And each alliance yes. member puts in a set amount of resources: par steel, titanium, to lithium. Um, maybe even be able to do materials also, and then or that becomes the war, and the winner takes all, and then they can share it amongst the alliance and make that a way to settle conflict versus some of the really convoluted things that we do to, to get attention from another alliance. So, Actually, I got kind of an idea. To, I, want, I want to actually kind of step up that game a little bit. Set, you know how we, we obviously donate to the alliance as far as building the alliance, adding extra members, extra speed up, so on and so forth? Um, mm -hmm. Have a war coffers. So ha have a section to donate to the war coffers. So everybody's like, hey, you know, donate X amount in. And then you can take that war coffer over, you know, the, the whole amount there and go, or just part of it, whatever you want to do. So you're like, hey, listen, you know, I want to do, um, I want to do 100,000 dilithium. I want to do 2 million par and 500,000 of trit. Um, and then, and then if you're really kind of, kind of filling your Wheaties, uh, add some, um, add some G3 to it. So you know you can say I want to I want to put this into the kitty here, try to sweeten the pot, see if we can't get something going, and do exactly what you said. So everybody goes, I'm donating this. So whoever whoever that that leader is that has that function to have a five v five, ten ten, fifteen fifteen, um, go out to an area. This it's it's a war area. Everybody goes into the system. Everybody links into that particular one, and you know. Uh, it's it's just a battle from there. You know, somebody goes, all right, everybody ready, ready. Everybody readies up, hits a button. Everybody's readied up, and then as soon as the last person hits the ready up button, um, there's a five second countdown. War starts. Last last alliance standing gets the booty. 
I like it. So, let's get in Scope Leo. I hope you're listening. <laughs> nice. Number four, Blueprint Exchange. So, this is kind of a modification on one we presented last time with the Blueprints. And this was if we don't go to a different uh, mechanic for it, that we use a Blueprint Exchange where you get like 10 to 1 exchange rate or 20 to 1 exchange rate for the same class of ship the next level up. Right. So... And what I, I think it's I think we did we did touch on this one on 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 which this one right right we talked about changing the currency and being able to possibly select what ship you're submitting the blueprint tokens for mm-hmm. but if they don't do that this is another opportunity for Scopely to oh. play with this it might work better for their mechanic yeah honestly it would work great because it's like we had talked before I'm sitting on two hundred some odd envoy blueprints I know I know Ramius is sitting on a buttload. Uh, yes, there's just there's just so many blueprints that we're not utilizing, and uh, which actually, uh, while I'm thinking of it, you know how we what we've been scrapping ships. I wanted to touch on kind of our theory of what we saw. Uh, it's it's it doesn't really it doesn't really affect the game per se. Um, there's some number changing, but we'll we'll get into that here here in just a little bit. But I mean, I guess we can just talk about it real quick. Um, with the blueprints, you've built ships, and then you build ships for ship events. So you build them up, you, you use resources, whatever, and you watch your power levels change. Well, whenever you scrap a ship, your power level actually drops. It's it's an insignificant amount, but it does drop whenever you scrap a ship. So if you start scrapping a ton of ships, or if you got Depends ships, on what with, ship you're talking about? I've scrapped some and dropped almost a hundred thousand in power. Okay, well there, well there you go prime example again you know i haven't scrapped anything major i still got my voclis i still got my uh my, my kumari and they're still sitting my kumari is right at 400k my voclis is setting at 334k 333k so like that um so if i were to scrap something like that i would lose a, a ton i'm sure but that was that was kind of a question that we had you know what what does the power actually represent is it what you've done so far in the game? Is it is you know do those extra ships that you build that are sitting over in in the in the the ship garage, if you will, um, you know where they're getting mothballed, or do they do they provide any sort of extra boost to the station? Another question that we've had. So it's, it kind of it kind of falls along the lines of the the ship blueprints of. Is it worth doing the exchange? Is this why we build those ships and we keep around for that just a little bit of extra added defense? If that's if that's a thing, um, or, or what have you? So that was that was a question that I had um, that I had proposed Ramius earlier this week was, yeah, are you noticing anything? And we kind of did a scientific test on it. You know, we build a ship up and let it sit there for a minute, watch the numbers, and then send it to the scrapyard and, and we watch the numbers fall. So. Yeah, I had a discussion with Amergen uh, between now and the last show, and he was saying that absolutely do not scrap any ships, that it's it's having an impact on your overall power. Uh, not that it helps your defense, but it shows differently in your overall power in the rankings. So it, it's having an impact. So, so maybe the scrapyard is not a, a great idea, but with that, but in that, in that same vein, though, um, when you scrap a ship and you've built it up, and I've I've pulled uh, G three rares out of scrapping a, a ship or two here, and you do get something back out of it, yes, but it does it does affect your overall power. So if you've got um, if you've got you know difference between first and second uh, place on power rankings is 100k and you go scrapping a Voclis and you lose 100k power and it drops you down, you know there are folks out there like, oh my god, I want all the power yeah, everybody's different yes sir, yes sir okay, next up the option to buildings the option to bring up a new building to your current ops level in one click so this came directly from me. I crossed into power level 30 and started doing construction on a dilithium pump. Mm-hmm. And that booger took every bit of a week dilithium generator to get up to level 30 because it starts at level one. Right. See, that's, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. 
Yeah, yeah honestly, I think you, you should be able to do that. And, and it would require X amount of, of speed ups, X amount of resources, or maybe do kind of a kind of a bundle well, deal. Where it you... should cost what it costs. That's fine. I don't have an issue with the amount that it costs. Oh, no, no, no. But no. that's 29 clicks of going back through one minute, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, seven minutes. Or, or if you're starting to run short on um, on speed ups and you're using right. an hour here and a day here and, and 15 minutes here and, and, and 30, 10 minute speed ups and everything else just to make that speed up happen. Um, yeah, that, that's that's a lot of button clicking to do right there. Yeah. So that's that's my two cents on that one. Yep, I like it. And number six, an Alliance Marketplace. And this one's been brought up by a number of people. I think it's a good idea. I think it's actually almost essential. We need some way to allow Alliance members to put resources out for the rest of the Alliance. I mean, we've gained the resources, we've gained the materials and the power. Why not be able to have some sort of exchange process where we can put something into a bank or marketplace and be able to make that available for lower level players? Well, if you think if you think about it, before they did the, what was it, the third update, something like that, there was actually a bank it was yes. right next to the command center. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. that's been that that building has been nixed as far as you being able to click hidden. on it. They've been hidden. Yeah. They, so, you know what what was the intention of that? Now, it, it, when you looked at it, it said you had to be level fifty, if I remember right. Right. So yeah, that was for everything that you couldn't or shouldn't or wouldn't uh, access yet. The non constructed resources. Right. All of them said level 50. Now, the most recent ones, with the most recent updates, they've nixed that. So the placeholder is there visually, but there's nothing that pops up when you touch on it. Right. So it, it kind of it kind of reminds me of when uh, when we noticed the the captains. It was like, oh, <laughs> let's 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 shut that down. So we've kind of given every you know they've like oh, let's give everybody a a sneak peek of what what could be coming and then um and then build some drama and shut it down what are you? Well, i don't know that it was a matter of building drama I just, they didn't have the uh coding right to hide it the way they wanted to Damn that and now that they now that they practice it a little bit uh they've got it under control yeah very well could be next up what are you doing? search and yeah, there is a bit of a search function, but the ability to search alliances or alliance members beyond the top 100 just needs to exist. And most people don't think about this until you go looking for somebody. And if they're in an open alliance that's beyond the top 100, you can't find them. You can't search for an individual person and see what alliance they're with, anything like that. You can't even search alliances as a whole list unless you're outside of an alliance. So why don't we tweak that little functionality so that it always works? It's no different than the function where, like, if you're mining, you can't manage your ship. But if you go to a ship that's not mining, select manage, hit the left or right arrows, you can access all those functions. Come on now. Yeah, I, I, I again. I'm not again. I'm not going to give any free ads to the game, but um, I played you know, War Nations. You were able to type in somebody's name and pop up what alliance they were with, what their strength, power, so on and so forth was, and you could see stuff like that. Um, I haven't played the game in a couple of years now, but I used to play it about as heavily as I play uh, Star Trek. But yeah, you you had that function. You could do a search and find out what alliance they were with, so on and so forth. Um, you know, they Star Trek is starting to get a lot of nifty things like saving base locations and coordinates and whatnot that, that a lot of other games have. It's just taking time to get it in. So, you know, just like any game, it's going to progress. It's going to get better. But yeah. hopefully, so. hopefully something like that does come across where we can do a, a search for a name and, and find them. It's not like the information's missing. We've got the ability to 
see them if they're in our alliance, if they're in the top 100. So let's just add right. that functionality so that we can uh, be able to access those members. There's times where people leave alliances and they're low enough down that you can't find them except for to look at their last location, things like that. And it's it's troublesome. I, I don't want to spend a half an hour looking for somebody that's, that's low that, you know, say you know they they left the alliance for whatever reason it's like hey you know what happened you know just kind of kind of say hey what's up you know we care or whatever um yeah you know, well, i don't want to spend a half an hour looking for somebody <laughs> i'll give you a good example we've got a, a comrade that left the game for the last quarter of last year uh, war eagle yep and good guy good friend and he turned his character over to his son who was playing we were fostering him and for whatever reason, he bailed out of the Alliance, his decision. But I know we're into the first quarter of the new year and War said he was coming back and wanted to participate and can't look for him. Yeah, so. He's not in the top 100, can't reach out and get him, don't know where the base is, so. So War, if you're listening, hey buddy, um, love to have you back home. Yeah, I've, I've already hit him on Discord, but for our game features, this is that's the frustration. Yeah, so that's the list. That's the list for uh, 2.0 and uh, uh, all of our commentary on it. Are we giving this out as one package, or do we want to do three different winners? I, you know, I, I, I think it would just be cool to have it as a package. What do you think? Should should we do split it between three different winners? Or I was uh, thinking three different winners, just because. The winners so far have been family members, and yep. I don't want people to think that we're this. This is not know. rigged. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not rigging this. I promise. It's just the luck of the draw. The first one, um, everybody just kind of scrubbed back through old content, found out the the Wingo stole my plant, and then um, last week we did a random number generator for our good buddy over in uh, Colombia. It was. Deep Space Mondor? 99. No, Mondor was oh, the first uh, one. Deep Space Mondor 99. Deep Space yeah. 99 won the 1,000 lakh. Congratulations to you. Um, so we want to give everybody an opportunity. So everybody's everybody's eligible to get in. No, just because you won in the past doesn't mean you can't win again. So um, I'm thinking what I want. So the winner of the Epic. Oh, what, are we, what can we do? Do we do random number generator or do we do we come up with something? We can do random number generator. We can do a comment on Discord. Or YouTube. Okay, I have an idea. Earlier in the show, I mentioned I had a dog. What kind of dog do I have? That right there will be the one that wins the 500 Uncommon. So pay attention to the show. If you have to, go back and listen to it again. So what kind of dog do I have? Okay. Comment in Contest A. Comment in Contest A. In Contest A, comment what kind of dog that I have. I did mention it earlier. So there's that one. As far as the rares, we're going to do Contest B. So in Contest B, you'll enter your answer there. Um, what happened to me last week on that episode? I did mention it in this episode. What happened to me and, and what, what had affected me? How did Shoddy get polluted? Yes, how did I get polluted? There you go. That's that's even better. It's even funnier, too. So how did I get polluted? That right there is for the 500 rare in Contest B. And then we're going to create Contest C, since we're, since we're doing three, because I want to keep all this separate. I want everybody in Contest C to type in... And only, only what I only what I say to type in. If you type in anything other than that, you're automatically disqualified. Because <laughs> I want to see if you're paying really close attention to what, what we're telling you. Um, 
Shoddy's the man. <laughs> Shoddy's the man. Type that in in contest C, <laughs> and you're going to win 500 epics. We're going to do the very similar thing that what we did last time. Random number generator. But it says Shoddy's the man. You're already in. Yeah, it's a little self-serving, but it's going to be fun nonetheless because I'm the man, and I want to get you hooked up with the 500 epics. So, again, Shoddy's the man in contest C to get in on there. Tell me, how was I? If Remy assists the man, you won't be disqualified. Just saying. If you type anything other than Shadi's the man, you're disqualified. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Uh, but uh, so, like I said, Shadi's the man in contest C for the 500 epic. How did I become polluted in last week's episode for 500 rares? And then in contest uh, A, what kind of dog do I have? If you can figure all that out, put your information in there. I want to see some, I, I would love to see some different winners. So everybody, you got to get on top of it. You got to pay attention to it. And then so, what's this episode? Your puppy is A. Puppy's A. Polluted is B. Polluted is B. And I'm the man in C. <laughs> so, um, Everybody, like I said, you're, whenever we post this episode, you'll have 24 hours to put your answer in or put your put your entry in in contest C. Now, the first two that get the answer right, you know, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and call that one, and and we'll notify you that you've won, and then um, I'll contact you outside of uh, outside of the room to get to gather some information from you. But as far as the uh, epi uh, in, in contest room C, 24 hours after this is posted, that's when we'll throw down for the 500 epic drawing. Um, that's going to be awesome. 500 directives. That is one free epic dillo. Then you get, uh, again, two rare dillos and five uncommon dillos total. So uh, ought to be a good time. That'd be a really good time. Kind of excited to see what happens here. Um, so yeah, you got your instructions. You know your mission. Make it happen. So with that being said, are you uh, you pretty well wrapped up here, boss. I am. Awesome, awesome. Uh, the uh, channels have been updated, and you've got hints to uh, get you to the right place. So A says puppy, B says polluted, C says the man, and you should be able to figure it out. So with that being said, I think we're going to call it done. Um, yeah, Scotty's down there tinkering with the warp engine. Yep, I think he says it's ready to go. All right, folks. That's it. That's what you get. I want to see some uh, see some action going on in the, uh, in the chat. With everything going on, tell your friends. Come get us. Come meet with us in the Discord. We'd love to talk with you. Um... All of our information, our social media is on the uh, bumper at the end of this deal. So, I think that's about it. All right. Everybody remember, fly safe. Live long, kick ass, and we'll see you on the other side of the sun. Later. Remember to follow us on our social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We can be found on iTunes, Podbeam, Patreon, and here on YouTube. Comment below, click like if you do, and subscribe because you should have already. Do not forget to click the bell to get the alert when the next episode is available.